Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, with liquor shills, dust lasers, peasants, vassals, minions. I'm Issa Lydia. Welcome. And uh, today I want to talk about a, a congressman. Congressmen uh, who leave government service and then, uh, you know, have to try and make ends meet after they get out of uh, get out of this government service. And uh, so to hear a couple fairy tale endings like this really uh, warms the heart that uh, all these people that have served our country so well, so very well in Congress, uh, that uh, sometimes they get rewarded. And uh, we have two examples today. Of course, uh, everyone knows about uh, Eric Cantor. So he got trounced in that last election and was completely caught off guard. Thought he was a shoo-in, as because most incumbents are, and he is a complete banker bootlicker. So you thought for sure he was going to get reelected. He used to be the former House Majority Leader, and um, so now uh, didn't take him too long, and uh, he's already landed on his feet at the investment bank of uh, Molis and Company, and he will be uh, not only the vice chairman and managing director, but uh, he's also elected to the board. And uh, his wife serves on a lot of the, these uh, corporate boards as well. In fact, she used to work for Goldman Sachs. So uh, between their two salaries, they, they should be doing pretty good. And in fact, uh, he's going to have a $400,000 base salary, uh, $500,000 cash signing bonus, a million dollars in stock. And then uh, next year, in 2015, he'll get a $1.2 million cash bonus and more stock. And uh, this company... Uh, uh, represents a lot of people that have been very good to Eric Cantor, uh, people like uh, Warren Buffett in uh, the country of Dubai and uh, Blackstone. And uh, so he will be uh, working with his masters after uh, serving them so well in Congress and uh, the United States uh, government. And in fact, uh, Blackstone and Goldman Sachs were amongst uh, some of his biggest donors. And uh, and, uh, and in fact, uh, this investment bank, Moldis & Company, is kind of a boutique bank that uh, was run by a former UBS banker. So it's all big, cozy family. So congratulations, Eric Cantor. Uh, America can have a huge sigh of relief knowing that uh, you landed on your feet. Uh, we thought you'd end, out, end up out on the street, just didn't know it was going to be Wall Street. And uh, now we have the, the other story is uh, two former uh, senators, Trent Lott and John Bro. And um, one Democrat and one Republican, and uh, they work for a firm called Squire Patton and Boggs, uh, which they originally started. And uh, so now they've been hired by a Russian bank, a Gazprom bank, uh, the bank that uh, services the, the gas giant, state-owned gas giant, uh, Gazprom. And uh, they have been sanctioned by the United States and the Obama administration. And through this firm, yes, two former uh, American uh, senators are now working for a Russian bank to try and undermine uh, the sanctions placed by the sitting uh, administration and present U.S. government. So a little irony there. So uh, so there we have it, uh, the 2014 countdown of uh, ex-congressmen uh, cashing in and uh, ending up in some of the strangest places. Uh, but they're certainly not alone. There's now 417 ex-members of Congress uh, who are lobbyists. And uh, so, anyway, I, I guess they should just uh, consider um, a lobbying job as part of a retirement package for uh, for congressmen. Because certainly somebody like Eric Cantor, who's never had any experience in investment banking, uh, who's a lawyer and uh, made a lot of money off of uh, real estate, and certainly is one of uh, Congress's uh, ex-richest members. Um, so he'll be uh, no stranger to this environment. And they're buying his Rolodex, so he can basically just be a schmooze king and uh, make a lot of money for uh, Mullis and company and make a lot of money for himself. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too?